Hallelujah. Hey everyone. I'm just on here because I want to share a couple of really awesome testimonies. Um, God's been doing some great things. Uh, I actually was kind of debating whether I should even come on and share at all because um, I didn't want to be prideful. I didn't want to be boastful, but God actually showed me it's quite the opposite. Like he told me like, declare about what I do, like rejoice in what I've done. And I think he kind of killed two birds with one stone. He said, if you are holding back because you don't want to be prideful or boastful, it shows that there's still a root in you that thinks that you had anything to do with what I was doing. Like it was God's grace. And what I had to do with it was participating in believing in what God's grace is. And I believe that God's grace is doing something good right now, even as I'm sharing it. So I want to just read a scripture verse too. Um, it's Psalm 92 verse 1. It says, It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night on an instrument, on ten strings, on the lute, and on the harp with harmonious sound. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in your works. I will triumph in the works of your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. So, a couple great testimonies. Um, God, he's a God who, who can do what we don't understand. And um, he's always working things out. Uh, first testimony, I'll talk about, um, I went to New York a couple months back. Uh, and New York is where I grew up. If you don't know my story, I'm from upstate New York. I'm from Albany, New York. And um, to make a long story short, I was not a believer, really. I had moments where I had encountered Jesus and I knew things about God and I had been in the church for a while, but I wasn't a diehard on fire Christian. Um, so that city kind of really ate me up. It really did a number on me. Um, just partying in that city, making bad friendships, getting messed with, getting screwed over. But how many of y'all know that when you give your life to God, he can take you back to the place that tried to destroy you and show you that you have conquered it. The Bible says in 1 John that once you believe in the Son and once you become a disciple of Jesus Christ, you have conquered the world. You, you have conquered sin. You've conquered, you've conquered the devil. You've conquered the evil one. It's what it says. So I went back to New York a couple months ago and uh, I was with um, a few people. And um, we went to the top of the, 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 one of the buildings in the capital of Albany. If you don't know, Albany is the capital of New York. And that's where a lot of the laws and the legal jurisdictions for the state of New York are done. It's where all the state workers go. Um, it's in Albany. And there's this big, uh, this big building. I'm trying to remember the name. Uh, man, I should probably just look it up. Corning Tower. It's called Corning Tower. Anyways, we went to the top of Corning Tower. And uh, there was a woman up there, and we were looking around at everything. Beautiful sight. You can see almost the whole state. Uh, there was a woman up there, and, uh, you know, I walked over to her. She was sitting kind of in the corner, and uh, I figured she might be an employee there, which she was. And she was, uh, she was just, you know, hanging out. It's her job just to observe and make sure everything is going smooth up there. Um, I got talking to her about faith. got talking to her about God, and we just had a little conversation. The Lord gave me a little word of knowledge about her that um, there's people in her life that have struggled with alcoholism and that there's, there's somebody who's, who's dealing with homelessness right now. And uh, she confirmed that that was true. And I think it was, she said it was her uncle or, or, or maybe it was a cousin, I forget. But either way, this woman, she, she was in a place where she was, you could tell she was discouraged and she was down and she needed Jesus. And God put me there at that time, in that exact moment to minister the gospel to her. And I shared the gospel with her. And right there on the spot, she was ready. She had heard the gospel a few other times. There was other people praying and interceding for her. But I got to be the one. Just who happened to be there. I wasn't planning it. It wasn't my doing. But God brought us there. He led us up there. He led me to her. And because of my obedience, just to go up to her and, and share the good news with her, she accepted Christ right there on the spot. And she got saved. And I'm telling you, it's important to be obedient. <laughs> it's very important to be obedient. And God does honor your obedience. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. So she got saved right there on the spot. Just a testimony. I had to share it. But, but the significance to this testimony and for my life is that Albany was the city that tried to destroy me. But God turned my heart from a heart of stone into a heart of flesh. And he changed me and he gave me a heart to share. Not instead of, instead I used to, you know, share 
evil things with the world and, and I was an outgoing person. I was a passionate person. I would share partying with people. I would share drugs with people. I would share, you know, how to, you know, be the best version of yourself and, and go get what you want and do what you want and live how you want. That was kind of my whole aura. That was my, that was my whole thing. And I was trying to figure out life and I was sharing and sharing lies and evil with the world. But when God grabbed a hold of my heart, he changed it. And then he said, he, he put the gospel in my heart and he said, you're going to go preach the gospel. And he's making it happen. He manifested himself in my life that he brought me back to the city that tried to destroy me. He put me on the top of the city that tried to destroy me on the top of that Corning Plaza tower. And I go up and, and I'm at the top of the city of Albany and there's a woman up there. And what do I do? I shared the good news with her and she got saved. And I now proclaim the love of God. There's so much significance to what happened there prophetically when you, when you look at the, the pieces of the puzzle. That the same place that tried to destroy you, God brings you to the top of it and allows you to stomp on the devil's head and, and win a soul for Jesus Christ. So glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And, and I'm telling you, God can do this in your life if you be obedient to his voice and you trust and believe in his promises and you stick to this word and you keep following this word and you keep doing what God tells you to do. He can do amazing things. Secondly, all right, second testimony. If that wasn't enough, we'll, we'll kill two birds with one stone. Secondly, just a few days ago, I was at Waterfront Park. I'm here in Central Florida um, in Claremont. There's a park called Waterfront Park. I've been going there the last week just to go for myself, to, to be with God. And, and I mean, everywhere I go, I guess it's for God. But I went there to, to go minister, to, to play my guitar, to play worship music, and to just shine for Jesus because that's what we're called to do. He said, set your light, you know, be the, you're the light on the hill, shine for this world. So that's what, I'm, that's what I did. And I was shining and I've been playing. And as I've been playing, the Lord keeps putting it on my heart to preach. And he keeps putting it on my heart that, that, that to, to baptize people there. And um, so I prayed and I was like, God, this is like a desire that, uh, that I have and that I want. Like, I want to see people get baptized, Lord. I pray for that. I pray that that would happen. And I thought that I was going to have to, you know, get a megaphone and start preaching and, and doing all this stuff, which I, 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 I'm not saying that's bad. I'm not even against doing that. And, and I probably will do it. And I did do it a little bit even after, after this testimony. But, but I'll share with you what God had me do. I was there on the beach just hanging out one day, praying. I was with God. I was worshiping. I had my speaker. I was listening to some worship music. Um, and as the worship music was playing, there was a song that came on. It talks about uh, like dance like David and be undignified. You know, let go of your dignity. Let go of, um, let go of, of just sitting there stagnant. And, but enjoy God. Like I love to dance. I love to jump around. And if I was alone, I would do it. I always do it when I'm alone with God. Um, I've had moments where I've danced in front of others too in, in the church and congregation, but I'm in public. And God was like, get up and dance, man. You can do it. I've done it before. God's been leading me to do that. Like in the last several weeks, he's just been leading me to just start dancing in public. And it's like, what are you doing, bro? But it's like David, like that's what David did. And um, God's been, lead Holy Spirit's just been prompting me to do it. So he prompted me in that moment. He's like, lose your dignity. This is your moment, man. So I start dancing. Uh, I start jumping around on the beach just in circles and to this song that's like, I'm gonna dance like David, dance like David when the ark comes back to the city. Maybe some of y'all know that song, but it's super fun. So I'm dancing. I'm looking a little crazy. There's like three people behind me and they're on the swings. They're younger kids. They're probably, they're probably high school. I don't know, maybe a little older, but, um, they're on the swings, they're watching, they kind of, I think they might dig it a little bit, like this dude doesn't even care. <laughs> so, so I'm dancing, I'm having fun, one of them comes up to the water and, and uh, walks by me, and I look at her, I say, hey, Jesus loves you, you know, God bless, and, and I asked her, I said, hey, you want to get baptized? She was like, oh, no, I don't know. I'm not, not about that, but she, I guess she'd already been baptized, and she went to church, but anyway, her friend, who was, who was back with them, um, he yelled across the beach, he said, I want to get baptized. I was like, okay, like, I wonder if these guys, like, are legit. Are they making a joke towards me? Are they just kind of mocking me? I was like, really, bro? You really want to get baptized? And I was like, you know, just talking to him. And he, came, I was like, come here, man. So I came out, he came over and we had a conversation. And I told him about God. And the Lord just started to minister to him. The Holy Spirit just started to pour into this kid. And he was legit. It wasn't, it wasn't some joke. It wasn't some, some play. And I know, not, be, not even just because of the evidence of what people say, but because of, because of what the Spirit was doing. God was doing something. He was marking him in that moment. He was showing him his love, and he was manifesting himself to him in that moment. But why was he able to do that? Because of my obedience. Because of me just saying yes. Me just saying, yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what God says. And if I look like a fool, so be it. 
forget that. It's a lie anyway, because I didn't look like a fool. People thought it was funny. People thought it was great. And, and I know a witness even came over. There was, there was a, another Christian lady. She had a, a, a shirt on that said something about, a, a, I'm like a citizen of heaven. I think it said it on her shirt that she was a citizen of heaven. And then, uh, so she comes over while I'm bringing this kid out to the water, sharing the gospel with him. And he's accepted Christ as his Lord. And I'm telling him, you know, about being born again and being born of the spirit and being baptized. This is your declaration. This is your moment to die with, with Christ and leave your old self behind. And he said, yes, this is what I want. He said, this is the best decision I'll ever make in my life. I said, yeah, you're darn right. It is <laughs> you're, you're heavenly, right? It is you're saved, right? It is you're not, you're not damned anymore. You're, you're, you're saved, right? So I bring him out to the water and this lady comes over and she's watching the whole thing like another Christian lady and his friends come over. We get a video. We baptize the kid and I pray over him and the Holy Ghost. And man, he, he was he was delivered. I could tell God was really ministering to him and to his friends, too. And God is good. So it's just a little testimony and it's an encouragement for you to realize that that don't ever deem yourself unworthy. Don't ever deem yourself unworthy of what God wants to do in you. He can do amazing things. We just have to be obedient and step out. And the thing is, once you start to be obedient, start to step out, God changes things in your heart because you start to see the realization of like, wow, this actually really works. Like the Bible says in Romans that his word, it's the word of God and it is never returned void. That's what the Bible says. So when you put out the word of God, it's never going to come back void like it's some dud. Even when you don't get to see the promise come to pass, even when you don't get to see it happen right there. It's not returning void. So be encouraged. Be obedient. Go out there and just share the good news with people. Go out there and share the gospel. You got to be a little crazy. You got to be like John the Baptist. Look at my hair. I haven't brushed it in days. I got John the Baptist hair. Speaking of John the Baptist, I, I, I got to baptize the, the young kid. So praise the Lord. God is good. And he's got good plans for you. Don't, 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 don't be disobedient to God because other people's other people's well-being and their being made righteous is dictated on you being obedient and you just saying yes. Same thing happened with Jesus. The Bible says in Romans that because of Adam's disobedience, many were made sinners. Many more were made sinful. Because of one man's obedience, the man Jesus Christ, many were made righteous. So God, he wants to, he wants to show people that he makes them righteous and he wants to use you to do it. So I'm going to tell you, don't be disobedient. When you hear God's voice, don't be afraid. Just step out and do it. Whatever he's calling you to do, it's, it's really not a big deal. A lot of it is in our head. Um, so I just want to rebuke the lies of all the enemies. In Jesus' name, I command every unclean spirit to leave you in Jesus' name. That's hindering your calling from evangelizing and shining and, and being the, the amazing person that God has made you, predestined, and planned for you to be. So hallelujah. Jesus loves you. I hope that you have a great rest of your day. I hope that this testimony encouraged you. And uh, go out there and shine for Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. See you all in the next one. Love you guys.